Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am in deepest Dartmoor. And this is the second video that I am recording on a Thursday, the 25th of June, 2020. And it's hot. It's, I thought yesterday was hot, but today I swear, today feels like the hottest day of the year here. I did see my car registering temperatures of up to 29 and in some places 28 degrees as I was coming here. In the shade, it actually feels quite cool. But immediately that I go out into the, uh, into the sunshine, it feels hot again. Now I'm on high ground here, and um, that means the temperature might actually be a little bit less. But let me just turn around and, um, this is nice though, eh? Here I am, in amongst all the conifers. Fucking loads of flies around me though, that doesn't really help. Um, <laughs> oh well, whatever. So, today I would like to talk about ideology and why we need to get rid of it, all of it, you know. We can refer to it like the way we refer to maps. We can refer to it in a way that we refer to measuring instruments. But we don't get the measuring instruments mixed up with reality. And if we do, we're fucking stupid. And that is what I think is happening in our world at the moment. We're getting the measuring instruments mixed up with reality. We're getting a map mixed up with the territory. We're getting a menu mixed up with the meal. And as a result, that's why we've got this woke problem and that's why we probably end up having this far right problem as a counterpoise to that. And that's probably why we've got an Islamic extremist problem. It's because ideological possession basically gets a map of reality, treats it like it's the territory of reality. And that's an issue for me. I'm thinking that that really is a serious problem. So there's um, three maps I wish to show you just to give you an idea. I'm building a model here, which I want to share with you. There are three maps I wish to show you. Now, the first one is the Mercator map. You've seen this before, I'm sure. The thing about this map is that, as you know, it makes Greenland look a lot bigger than Australia, despite that Australia is probably you know, considerably bigger than Greenland. It um, also makes Norway and Sweden combined look bigger than India. And clearly, they are not, right? And, um, what it does do though, what it does do to its credit, is it gives you the shapes and the outlines of the continents accurately. It shows you what their true shape looks like, right? Um, though it doesn't represent their sizes, as everything gets much bigger as you get further away from the equator. And then of course you've got this and other map I want to show you here. This one's the Gold Peters map, I believe it's called. And as you can see, it gets everything in the north of the world where there's a lot of land in the high latitudes in the north of the world and it squashes it makes greenland hardly recognizable squashes canada and russia squashes northern europe right so you can't really see the shapes of them and then um what happens is when you get to the uh, high tropics low temperate ranges the 20s degrees 20s and 30s well it, it, it shows them quite accurately. But then uh, when you get to the equator, it makes everything too long and skinny because Africa is pr um, predominantly centered around the equator. It makes Africa look too long, too thin. But the advantage that this map has is that it represents the true sizes of the countries and the continents, but it just bends them out of shape. And then you've got this one, the Robinson map, which is the uh, kind of a compromise. It gets the Mercator or Mercator map and uh, tries to represent the shape of the continents in that usual way. But instead of squashing the top and the bottom, it attempts to slightly sphericalize everything to make everything look a little bit more true to its size as well as true to its shape. It fails um, at getting things true to their shape the further you go away from the center of the world. So the UK, British Isles, and of course Africa too, I suppose, because Africa is quite near the center of, of uh, the world. It's just to one side of the meridian line. Um, it, it can show you the true shapes of them because they're very close to the uh, longitude zero. Now, of course, the closer you are to longitude zero, 
Britain's right there, the more you're not bent out of shape, where New Zealand's on the other hand is at the bottom and at the very far extreme near the uh, international dateline. So New Zealand is skewed and bent out of shape, you see? So why am I bringing this up? Well, I'm thinking of it like this way. The Mercator I'm using as an analogy for the right wing politically. The uh, Gold Peters one I'm using as the left wing one and the Robinson one I'm using to try to represent the political center. Now, one of the things that these maps all have in common is they lack one dimension. None of them represent the true nature of the world because none of them are a physical sphere. None of them are a ball. They're all attempting to show you what the world would look like as a flat plane in 2D, but the world is 3D. And um, I'm half tempted to make jokes about flat earthers now, man. <laughs> I didn't bring their world up, but I don't want to digress too much, man. and just make it too complicated if I, if I use their map, right? So, what it, um, the way it works is, the explorers, right? You could say the early imperialists, the British, the, the Spanish, the French. They were the original, well, in at least in our modern history, they were the original imperial navigators in our modern history. Now, yes, all right, there were things going on with the, with the Vikings a lot longer before then, but in our modern history, which is the bit that the social justice warriors and the left like to make um, out all white people and all Europeans to be as evil as Satan himself, um, all the countries in the north, including um, Europe and including America and all the more developed countries in the world, well, they're saying that the Mercator map makes those countries look big and it was designed specifically to make those countries look big and to make all the colonies which are nearer the equator and nearer the more southern ends of the world look poor and small and that's the reason why this map was made but it's not the reason why that map was made that map was um, devised from about the 1600s onwards by navigators people who were sailing around the world they needed to have accurate understanding of cartography and astronomy. They weren't interested one way or the other whether they made the countries look smaller as they got from near to the equator or bigger when you got to the more polar latitudes. They weren't interested in stuff like that. All they were interested in is that they wanted to have an accurate representation of the shapes of everything and they wanted to have their latitude and longitude squares and all of that um, as well as you know their understanding of uh, astronomy so they'd be able to work out where they were so they wouldn't get lost at sea it was as simple as that they weren't thinking to themselves excuse me as i fiddle with this i hope it don't make too much noise right back now they weren't thinking to themselves oh let's make those people in that part of the world look small no <laughs> they haven't quite got to that yet right so I think the Gold Peters lot, and there was another map that was made similar to that. There were a bunch of real proper lefty crusaders who were going around and saying that maps were racist because they love that, don't they? They fucking love anything, make anything racist. I mean, like recently they had to make Cocoa Pops racist. Fucking idiots, man. So maps were racist because they made white man's countries look bigger than black man's countries or whatever. And so in order to, um, equalize that problem they come up with that gold peters map a map that doesn't even fucking look like the world it looks like uh you've squashed the world to pieces oh that's greenland is it i had no idea didn't recognize it oh is that norway i had no idea didn't recognize it see what i mean oh is that africa i swear it isn't that long and thin and all of these things you'd be looking and thinking yeah they're right they might represent the sizes but they don't actually look like the world right uh, there's a complete, total, out-and-out out distortion in order to make things equal. And that is kind of like what the left have done. And that's what the left are doing. They are creating an absolute, out-and-out out distortion of reality in order to make things equal. They're not thinking of how um, you equalise things or why you equalise things, or even if it's good or bad to equalise things at all. They're just thinking that you just should just equalise things just for the hell of it, regardless of anything. It's just equality for equality's sake, irrespective of whether that's a good idea or not. You know? 
And it's like, you know, that uh, Gold Pieces map is a good example of what happens if you get equality or equalization and you create something that's unrecognizable. And that is my issue with the political left. That's the best way that I'm describing. Now, of course, um, the Robinson map would have been um, a map that would have been created by people who are less about ideology than the Gold Pieces map. Because they just want to create a world that looks um, as close as you can get um, to the spherical Earth. So they've created a somewhat semi spherical version of the map that still looks um, as true to uh, the actual sizes and shapes of the continents as you can get to the original Mercator map. Now, of course, with the Mercator map, you can look at that and you think, well, it does look distorted. It does look distorted because the countries in the world are not that big. They don't look anywhere near that big. But you can look at the world and you can see that at least they are all correctly shaped. You recognise everywhere. You know, that's the thing. You recognise everywhere you look at. And you think, oh, I know where that is. I know where that is. I know where that is. Yep, yeah, that's easy. Looks a bit big in the top. A little bit small in the middle. But it's recognisable. Now, of course, that's the uh, problem. That wasn't um, designed for ideological purposes, nor was it designed to make the countries, the imperial origin countries, look bigger and the colonies to look smaller. That was only designed... I mean, that was just a bullshit rumour that was put there. But it was actually designed to be accurate for people who are navigating the oceans. And so, this, I think, represents the world that we're in at the moment. The left lie about everything. They probably lie about the right, <laughs> you know, and they most certainly do. Um, the people who are on the extreme ends of any of these ideologies, well, I mean, any sensible person wouldn't have time for people who are on the extreme ends of ideologies, full stop, right? And if you want to be able to find um, a true way of understanding things in the world, it helps to be as non-ideological as you can possibly be. Now, there will be a few of these academics out there who will say to you, I say, we've got to get rid of ideology. Ideology is the problem. And they'll say, oh, are you anti-ideology, are you? Oh, isn't that an ideology in itself? And then you just want to slap the cunts, really, for being smart cunts, don't you? Right? Because not necessarily is the answer. But they've already decided with their circular logic that it is. So then they don't have to listen to you. And that way they don't have to... Um, deviate from the ideology that is possessing them. You see, that's how it works. Um, I wouldn't say no, because it could be an ideology to have no ideology. You could have an anti-ideology ideology. Or you could actually decide that you want to get further than just mere narrative self while you're trying to work out how to rid ideological restrictions from the way humans view the world. And so I would say all three of those maps and the globe have all three of those maps and the globe make the globe a balloon so you can deflate it fit it in your suitcase blow it up special occasions when you need to see it but if you are going from one place to another place to another place and you want to know um the true size of the map well the gold piece want to show you the true size of it if you want the mercator map we show you the uh the true um geographic outlines or um, the actual shape, shall I say, the gold pieces want to show you the size and the uh, Robinson map will show you as clear as you can get in a flat form the, the bigger picture. And think of these three maps as like, uh, well, if they're all as important as each other, they all become a composite and they become all three and, and the and becomes the 3D version, the globe, and you use all of them and um, you then have many perspectives, then you are in a really good position because then you can just say to yourself, well, you are now able, without any problems whatsoever, to build a flexible map of reality based on more than one map. And that is my analogy or metaphor or whatever the word you would use, right, to describe how we attempt to think our way out of ideological thinking. And um, I shall well leave you with that and try and find my way back. I appear to be a little bit lost in this forest. I've got a rough idea how to become unlost, but hey, what the hell? It's a nice place, eh? I don't know when I'm going to be back here again, but I'd like to come back and, uh, you know, 
I think this makes good scenery. And you know the good thing about it? This would still be a good place to come in the winter because the thing about these um, conifer forests is that they do not lose their leaves, man. They don't look hardly any different. The only thing that looks different in the winter is that I'll be probably wearing more, um, wearing more layers. The angle of the sunlight will be lower. Um, and of course, uh, the ground might be a bit more bare, but if I was to go get an angle like that and show you the trees like that, that won't be any different. So there you go. Right, see you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Also join the Facebook group, follow us on Twitter and subscribe on BitChute. It's early days for us yet, so please help this channel grow and it will be gratefully appreciated if you do.